Anyone who's sewn on hooks and eyes knows what a struggle it can be. It really does require some finesse to get it right. I remember when I first started using hooks and eyes and it would either flip and flop about or they would be messy. And over the years, I've gotten some tips and tricks from better stitchers than I. Today, I'm gonna share that guidance with you to get you sewing strong, beautiful, and historically accurate closures in no time. There are many different types of hooks and eyes available. You have fur hooks and eyes, skirt hooks and eyes, which are specialty hooks and eyes. And then there are standard hooks and eyes, which is what you would use for your basic garment construction. And that's what I'm going to be focusing on today. Those are available in sizes zero to three. Since we're talking about size, if you're wondering what size would be appropriate for a historical garment in the 16th century, take a look at these extant hook and eyes that were found on a 16th century shipwreck. If you look at the scale, they're about 12 to 13 millimeters tall which is almost exactly the same size as a size three commercially available hook and eye. Typically they come in nickel, black, or white. Pretty obviously this is the hook and the rounded ones are called eyes and the flat ones are called a bar loop or a flat eye. Eyes are used when you are putting together a garment where the edges are going to be abutted whereas the bars are going to be used in a garment where your closure will overlap. And if you're like me, you'll just skip the commercial ones and make your own, which is a video I'm working on right now and that's coming out very soon. So the first question is how far apart should you space your hooks and eyes? If I'm putting them on one of my bodices, specifically the curved front bodices, I do like to place them about three quarters of an inch apart. Now, if I'm doing something that doesn't have any tension on it, what I like to do is I like to use this tool because there's no thinking involved. So all I have to do is place this in the area I'm going to be using it, spread it out, and it's going to give me even spacing. All I have to do is mark through these spaces here. The next question is, which side do you put the hooks on? Honestly, if you're doing 16th century garments, it doesn't really matter. They really didn't differentiate between which side. Since you're making bespoke garments, you can choose whatever's best for you. So since I'm right-handed, I will choose to put them on my right side. If you're left-handed, put them on the left. Easy peasy. To stitch these on, I like to use a 35 tooth linen thread, but if I don't have that available to me or I need something in another color, I like to use a top stitching or a heavy duty thread that I could just get at my local craft store. The main thing is to just choose a strong, supple thread and just make sure you wax it really good. Usually if I'm hand sewing, I don't double my thread because it causes it to tangle. But in this instance, I actually will double my thread because it makes it go faster. So if your thread is really thick, this can look kind of clunky. So you don't have to sew with a double thread. You can sew with a single thread. You're just going to have to take more stitches. So what I'll do is I'll sew the hook on with a double thread and I'll sew the eye on with a single thread so you can see the difference. So I always start by sewing on my hook. I do sew on my hooks and eyes before I sew on my lining because I'm going to use the lining to cover up the stitching of my hooks and eyes. It just makes for a much cleaner, nicer finish. So I place my hook on the mark and I'm gonna set it about a 16th of an inch in from the edge. I place my needle between the two loops at the bottom, which are called eyelets. And here's a quick tip. If you ever get your hooks and eyes mixed up and you're not sure which size goes with which, all you have to do is match up the size of the eyelets and those are going to be the same size hook and eye or hook and bar. So for the next step, I'm gonna move my hook out of the way and I'm gonna take a small back stitch. Then I just run my needle through my layers to where my hook will end. And then I place my hook down. I'm gonna anchor the top of the hook by whipping it over the hook once. I'm using really thick, strong thread, but if you're using something that's thinner, you're going to want to take more passes. But since this is strong, thick thread, I'm just going to go back into the hole where the thread has just come out of, and I'm gonna float between the layers and come out inside one of these eyelets. And then I'm going to double check that it's straight and that the placement is good. Then I'm going to take a stitch in the lower part of the eyelet and come back in through the eyelet. And then I'm going to take a stitch to the right. This is taking so long. I'm putting myself to sleep while I'm sitting here and editing it. So I thought, you know, there's an easier way, easier way to show you this than going through all the different stitches. So I'm going to draw it on my chalkboard. So, so it's really easy what you're going to do. You've already stitched this. You've come down and then you're gonna come 
out to the inside of the eyelet. You're going to take your stitch. You're going to stitch here. Then you're going to come over and stitch here and here. Then you're going to go to the other side and stitch here, here, and here. Now I like to take two stitches in each one. Extra security. If I'm doing a single strand, I'll probably take three. And to finish, you're going to take a back stitch between the eyelets and then you're going to do a surface knot. And then you can cut off the knot that you started with. And once you have sewn one hook, sew all the rest of the hooks. And now we're gonna determine the placement of our eye. And we're gonna do this by closing up any hooks and eyes that are above it. We're gonna have the garment edges meet, and then we're going to place the eye through the hook. And then with the garment edges in place, I'm going to pin it to the fabric. I then unhook it, and I'm gonna start exactly in the same way I started with the hook. I'm going to start with a knot, and then I'm gonna do a back stitch between the eyelets to secure it. And then I'm going to float the needle through my layers and at the top I want to anchor it down at each side by taking a stitch around the side of the eye. And I'm going to go again, I'm going to come back around to where I came out. Then I'm going to float between the layers to the other side and take a stitch and then back in. Since I'm sewing this with a single strand, I have to take more stitches in order to make sure that it is secure. But it also means that it doesn't look as bulky. Then I'm going to float down to the eyelets, to the bottom of one eyelet, where I'm going to sew it exactly the same way as I sewed the hook. But this is really messy looking, and if you want something that's cleaner than this, what I like to do, and this is a very historical method, is I'm going to cover this with the lining, which is going to give it a more polished look. All I do is I place the lining over the eyelets, leaving the hook free as well as the tip of the eye free, and then I'm just going to fell stitch it in place. If you're not using the lining and you want a more polished look, you can secure the eyelets with a buttonhole or blanket stitch, which actually are not the same stitch, so if you want to know the difference, you're going to want to check out this video right here.